so welcome back to the magic of calculus pre calculus i really hope that tomorrow we start the real course so today uh i am i am now in the final section of chapter one which is inverse functions. So what, what are inverse functions? Um, so the, the whole thing, the whole idea is that sometimes um, you can you can undo whatever a function did. <clears throat> so for example, well, for example, um, so if you, if you can undo something, uh, the function that undoes whatever if you have a function and you have a function that undoes what it did, that's the, um, that's an inverse function. <clears throat> so, oh, well, that's great. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of a number. I add, I, I add, uh, three to it, I multiply by two and I subtract five and I get, what do I get? Uh, I get a 13. This is a pretty link magic trick, but pretty sure I've seen someone do it. Of course, you're, you're the magicians. <clears throat> what number am I thinking of? This, the question is really, is anyone there? Huh? Wait, you want us to answer that question? Yeah. Was it six? Uh, yeah, it was six. <clears throat> thank you, Aaron. I think that was Aaron. That was Isaiah. Isaiah, thank you. I try to, I try to be super aware when I see a name pop up, but, but yeah, sorry. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, yeah, it was six. You are now officially a wizard, I'd say. Yeah. Nice. So, um, care to tell us how you did it? I mean, I'm, I'm a, it's true that a magician never reveals, reveals his secrets, but maybe you'll do us a favor. Well, honestly, I, I would say I did it the, the forward way. Well, no, I, I guess I could say I did the backward way. Like, I was just... I, I started at kind of like a middle number. I was like, it has to be somewhere probably like two through eight or like four through eight. And so I just kind of did the quick math in my head. All right. That could get, that, that could get exhausting, but that's definitely, I mean, you got the answer. So it works. Um, okay. So um, what if, um, so I guess maybe if uh, what if my answer is twenty twenty? <clears throat> that 
doesn't have to be ICA. Yeah. So I'm thinking of a number, I add three, multiply by two, subtract five, um, and I get 20, 20. You don't have to tell me the answer. Tell me what to do to figure the original number. How'd you go backwards? You go backwards? So, so how do I go backwards? So you start with 20, 20, uh, instead of subtracting five, what you add five, then you divide by two. And you subtract three. Yeah. So, um, well, that's that's all there is to it. Going backwards is um, is all there is to an inverse function. And then subtract three. I was thinking of the number a thousand nine point five. You know how to do this. <clears throat> um, so. If I wanted to write um, formulas, I would say that the function that goes forward uh, it has some formula. It is um, is a function that well. I just said add three, multiply by two, and subtract five. As long as I, um, as long as I don't mess up the brackets, which you know how you can be sure that you don't mess up the brackets, just write brackets in in, in front of every operation. Um, it's write more, but you're never wrong. <clears throat> so. To go back, um, I well, I do this thing, which is um, which is the inverse. It's the thing that goes back. Uh, I I add five. I divide by two, and then I subtract three. And this. Um, is is red f inverse and and it's the function that lets me recover the original number if I know the function. Um, so um, big warning sign. This is not um, is not one over f. Um, so why do we write it f inverse then? I don't know. I mean, I kind of know, but it's not. A, I don't have a very good reason. Just that everyone does. There's no getting away from it, but. It's not one over f. We didn't, you know. If I give you twenty, the number twenty twenty, and you tell you go back, you definitely don't go back by doing f. So um, you you don't. You don't go twenty twenty. Add two. Um, sorry, add three. Add three times two minus five, and then divide by it. And you know that this makes no sense. Um, so um, yeah, it's confusing notation, but it's just it it has nothing to do with multiplying unless f happens to be the function that multiplies, and then you are dividing. But it has nothing to do with the multiplicative inverse. So um, I'll go back to this example. Um, so um, 
Um, so here's a bad example. Here's a Um, so it's going to be similar, but it's going to be, it's going to be bad. I'm thinking of a number and I'm adding the digits. Um, and I get the number 12. Um, what number am I thinking of? Anyone want to play this game? Is it six? Six? Uh, I mean, if I... Six only has one digit. Um, oh, okay. so I'm, I'm not getting six. It's not six. Uh, what about 84? Oh, 84. So if I add the digits of 84, I get 12, but that is not the number I'm thinking of. Sorry, you lost. Any other guesses? What about 75? 75, uh, well, no. We could play Hangman. Um, any other guesses? Not 75. What about 93? Oh, 93, not 93. Okay, you get the points. Uh, the number I was thinking of, uh, it was uh, a number made of 11, uh, 12. No, actually, sorry, I misspoke. It's the number that's made of 10 ones and one two. I mean, you were getting there. So, um, what makes it so, I mean, so that was a that was a stupid question I was asking. Um, so the the real question is um, why does this work and the previous one does? What's the difference? It it's not specific enough. Like the other one gives you a specific set of instructions to do this one there's many answers to it it doesn't give you a clear like way to get the answer uh i think i think that i agree with you um i mean when you say it's not specific enough they're both equally specific but i i mean the instructions for what i'm doing are clear and before i was adding three multiplying by two and doing whatever the thing is, if you and I get the same instructions on the same number, we're gonna we're gonna give the same answer. And here, the instructions are also specific. Um, like this number I gave you, you follow the instructions, you get twelve. The inverse is in a function. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, but why? So you kind of said it, but in what way is this not specific? What's going wrong here? there's like a large number of answers that it could be yeah okay so i think both of you basically got the right the right answer the thing that's going wrong is that uh in this example uh different numbers give me can give me the same number uh, answer numbers you can give the same and by, I mean, you said a large number, and well, here there's infinitely many numbers giving the same answer. But if there were two, um, that would already be bad because you would guess, and I would probably know. Um, so different numbers can give the same results. Um, so there's no way of knowing. Um, which it is. So in, in math, um, we say we call this a property 
so we call it this, the bad property, we call it not being one to one. Uh, the good property, we call it being one to one. We say a function is one to one if, um, if different numbers give different outcomes. Or, in other words, saying the exact same thing. I'm trying to say, um, um, if you have, what am I trying to say? No two numbers, we just get an answer. <clears throat> so, this is what one to one means. And oh, well, the screen's so different. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm really. I'm 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 very square around the correct word, but it doesn't look like that. I don't understand. Okay. So this is what being one to one is, um, and so a function has an inverse. If if and only if it is one to one. So if it has an inverse. So if I have a if I have a function for every number, I get a number. If if it has an inverse, that means that there is a way to go back, um, and the inverse. I mean, the inverse of a function has to be a function. Otherwise, I'm not calling it the inverse. So every every input gives just one answer. That means um, uh, that means that for the original function, every answer has one question. And going the other way around, if there's only for, um, in the, like in this example, for every answer I give you, there's only one possible number I could be thinking of, then there is an inverse. Um, doesn't mean that it's easy to find, but it's there. Um, so um, going back to- I have a question really quick. Yeah, yeah. So for the one-to-one -one functions, it's the horizontal line test, right? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm getting there, yeah. Thank you. Right, so um, formulas, I mean, let's do some examples and then I'll, I'll do, I'll look at what Pascal was asking. So, um, for example, um, the function I just wrote to x plus three minus five is one, two, one. Uh, I can see this because I can find the inverse. And since I'm here, let's just talk about how to find the inverse. So, um, so, how do I find, um, well, I already did it. How do I find F inverse of 2020? Well, um, you already answered this question. You say 2020. equals um, 2x plus 3 minus 5 for some for some number and then you solve the equation um, so how do I find it's it's the x such that I have this equation 
So, um, you know how to solve this equation. In fact, we just did. Um, you, you basically, all the operations that are done to the x, you do them, you undo them until you get the x by itself. And, and there you go. So that gave me, I mean, I found f inverse of 2020, but normally if I wanna find the inverse, you want, if I wanna find a function, um, I would like to find, I would like to find a formula that works for every number. So how do I find f inverse of y? for any y. Well, the thing is, what I did here, um, there's absolutely nothing special about 2020. I just did this whole thing. Um, so that was supposed to be a highlighter. Where's the highlighter? Nowhere. Um, so nothing special about 2020, just what I did for 2020, do it for a y. Um, if uh, the number x, so um, which is the inverse of y, is the x that I have to write into the function so that I get y as an answer. That's what the inverse is. It's which number do I need to get that as an answer for f? So which number has 2x plus 3 minus 5 equal to y? And then you solve this equation. And I'm not going to solve this equation for the third time. Um, and then um, you, get, you, you get some formula, hopefully. And that means that f minus one of y is y plus five over two minus three. And there you go. So um, when I was taught to do like inverse functions and stuff, like they taught us to like switch, like write out the function and then switch the x and the y and then solve for the y, is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. So I was about to mention, when you write a function, you know, th this function that I was starting with, this is the function of adding three, so, uh, multiplying by two and subtracting five. So it doesn't matter that what I put into a function I call X or Y or uh, uh, potato, you know, remember that um, if I write this or these all mean the exact same thing. Um, and the same is true for, I mean, the same is true for any function, the same is true for F inverse. Um, so this is the same. As saying that F minus one of X is X plus five over two minus three. It's describing the exact same thing. It's telling you pick a number add five divided by two and subtract three. Did I ever tell you you had to call the number X? No, you just add five divided by two subtract three. Um, it doesn't matter. So what you, um, so what you have to do is solve this equation and use whichever letters you want. Um, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people do it by interchanging X and Y. Uh, you can do that if you, if you are happier, then you would be solving for Y, I guess. Um, so Yes, what I mean is like, it wasn't like the, like, what we would do is like, you would write like f of x equals 3x plus whatever, 
then you'd make it y equals 3x plus whatever, and then you would switch the x and the y, and then you would solve for the y. Right, so this is what you mean, right? Let me write it down. I think what you mean is you write y equals f of x here, mm -hmm. and then you go switch the x and the y, right? Yeah. And then you solve, so you would get x plus 5 minus 2 equals to y, and then this would be f inverse of x. So you get yeah. the exact same thing with a different letter. Here I have x's, here I have y's. Okay, is it like a common thing to like do that switch thing or do you it's a like... common thing, yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, there's not a big difference, but fine if you do it, it's fine if you don't. Sounds good, thank you. So, Summing up, um, um, so how do we find the inverse of a function f, um, I guess? So either you write y equals f of x, so for, um, you solve for x, for, it's also the letter that is not by itself already. Um, and what you obtain is um, x equals you, you obtain x equals f inverse of y. And then you know the, the inverse function. Or um, and this is it's just the same. It's equally easy, equally hard. Uh, if you if you prefer, you can write you can switch x and y. So you have um, so then if I have if I have y equals f of x, and I switch x and y, I have I get x equals f of y you solve now for the letter that is not already solved for. So you solve for y and you will you will get um, y equals f inverse of x. So I guess if you go the second way, you end with the, you end with the usual way we like, we like to write functions as y equals to a formula of x, but nobody's telling you which letters to do, what to use. Um, here, you just do whatever you want. Um, here, you can also switch x and y at the end if you feel like it. Um, so, so that's uh, how you find the numbers. All right. Um, so, what else do I have to say? I have to talk about graphs. So, um, so. What um, inverses and graphs? So how can I tell? So first of all, how can I tell if a function is one to one from its graph? Um, the answer is uh, well, Pascal said it already. So it's not a line test. The answer is it's pretty easy, as long as you remember. So here's a function. So so here's a function, and here, and here, here's a uh, here's a y. So. Uh, to find the to find the inverse, I would I would ask um, which which x 
for which and for how many is a real problem. Do we have f of x equals to y? Well, then we would have the point um, x comma y in the graph. And that means that the point has height y, because I know y is fixed, right? So this point has to be at a fixed height. This means that it's in the red line. The, a horizontal line is the, the set of points that are all at the same height. So there's one point on the graph. Why? So um, there is only one x for which f of x equals y. Um, so, so this is the horizontal line test. That's it. Um, draw um, if every horizontal line crosses the graph at least uh, most at uh, most once we say it passes and it means that the function is one to one so remember that we already talked about the vertical line test so if you don't pass the vertical line test that means that you have more than one point with the same x with the same x coordinate that's very bad because that means that the same x coordinate can give you different y coordinates. Um, and the points of a function, if you have the same x and different y's, um, that means that uh, there's two, two different values for the same x and that just makes it not a function. Um, the horizontal line test, if you don't pass, it means that for two y's, sorry, for one y, you have more than one x. So like my question before, you have um, for one given answer, I was thinking number 12, but there's more than one thing I could have started with. Um, and that's, uh, that you can tell when you draw a horizontal line and it doesn't, it crosses the, the graph more than once. Let's, let's do a pretty example. So here's the function x squared. x squared doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Um, so here's the horizontal line <clears throat> and uh, sometimes some of these lines, a bunch of these lines, they cross the graph twice. So what is this telling me? Um, so, so for example, a 3.1, let's make it 4. So the horizontal line crosses this particular graph um, uh, twice, which means that here there's an x for which x squared um, has this height, or here is another x. squared is four. Um, and I, I chose an easy function, you know with which these are. Um, this is x equals two, and this is x equals negative two. 
so you can tell um, you can tell that this function is now one to one in in two ways from the, both from the picture. Why is this so huge? Um, I can tell both from the picture from the horizontal line test and from, from using algebra. I know um, I know that if x squared is 4, that means that x could equal 2 or x equals neg uh, negative 2. So two options, the function is not 1 to 1. By the way, this is saying that f of x is 4. And uh, why 4? Uh, for no reason. The thing is, as soon as I can, I, you can choose any number, as soon as you choose any, as soon as you find one number for which this fails, um, uh, that, that's it. Yeah, the function is not one to one because to be one to one, it has to always work. There has to be always a most one answer. So it's fine if there's zero, but it's not fine if there's uh, two. <clears throat> okay, are there any questions? Um, I should talk. Um, I should say something else now. I have to warn you of this. Um, so, warning. This doesn't really. Let's find the inverse. Of um, the function e to the x plus x. So actually, um, even, even easier, instead of finding a formula for the inverse, let's just try to find f inverse of 2. So, what am I supposed to do? I'm asking you. First, you have to find the inverse of the function. Okay. Well, this is, I mean, I can do that. So, what am I supposed to do then? Um, I would, I do the switch. So I would make the X, I'd make it Y. Okay, so we have Y equals E to the X plus X. And I'm gonna decide to switch the letters. So I'm gonna write X equals E to the Y plus Y and then solve for Y. Um, and now what? I'm a little stuck. Don't you have to do natural log to get rid of the e or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. I'm supposed to get to natural log tomorrow, but also, I'm assuming you already know this. So um, let's try. I mean, no harm in trying. So on the left, 
I got log of x. On the right, I got log of u to the y plus y. Now, I have uh, a log of a sum. I feel, I mean, I feel like right now, I, I'm, I'm hoping that at some point you'll review your past pre-calculus life because you're going to need it, but I'm not expecting you to know it right now. If you have the log of a sum, what can you do with that? The answer is nothing. Um, Uh, definitely one thing you cannot do, which you might be, I know some of you are definitely tempted to do, the log of a sum is not the log of, uh, of the sum of the logs. Uh, so I'm going to make your life easy. Um, this equation, there's just, you don't know how to solve it. I don't know how to solve it. Nobody knows how to solve it. There's, there's, just, there's just no way, there's no answer. I mean, let's, um, why don't we, instead of me saying whether there is an answer or there isn't, why don't we try to ask the internet? Um, because the internet would know if there was an answer. Um, so for um, so for x, I said so for y. So for y. Let's see. I don't know how you're supposed to use this. Um, I just know that almost everything you write, it understands. So this is what I'm supposed to solve. Let's see if you understood. Oh yeah, did. So. So what did it tell me? It says y equals x minus w and of e to the x. Uh, what does that mean? Um, it means that we don't understand this. So we don't understand what the answer, I mean, I don't know. When, I don't want to say we understand that or not. But what happens when you face a new thing uh, that is new and scary? You just give it a name and you move on with your life. So what, hap what happens here, it gave me an answer. Um, I don't know why there's an M. I guess there's more than one answer. Um, it's solving it over the complex numbers, um, which I'm ignoring. So basically you encounter a new thing um, and you give it a name and then you say, you claim that you understand it. That's all that is happening. I'm not, I'm, this is just an example. You definitely don't need to know what this function is. I'm pretty sure no one does, like just this program knows. Um, you know, if you, if you ever actually needed to solve this equation, do my computer please? <sighs> Feels frozen. <sighs> um, if you ever needed to solve this equation, you would do what I just did and ask the internet. If Chrome had a frozen, I would click, you could click the link and it would tell you what this function is. Um, yeah, inside, you're frozen. Uh, Control L to lead. Oof. Oh, task manager is frozen. Can you hear me?
Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, I can hear myself. So, um, okay, so what happens? My computer is frozen, but you can still, there's still audio. So. Uh, okay. And what do I do? I know what to do. I have four minutes to do something. Out to four is what I'm doing. No. All right. I'm gonna jump or even die. So my audio. I should have. I should have installed Zoom here. Now I know. All right. I'm gonna. There's three minutes left. Uh, left. I'm just gonna say what I wanted to say. So, basically, my the moral of the story was that equations are really hard, um, and most of the time equations are unsolvable. Is this practical for you to know right now? Probably not, because if you see a problem in homework in, in a calculus textbook, it's gonna be solvable. They're not gonna give you impossible problems. So it doesn't matter. But once you move on to real life. You are going to uh, you are going to find problems that are impossible, maybe. And then what I recommend you do is write it into Wolfram Alpha. And if it gives you some names for functions you've never heard of, that means that there's no solution uh, to that to that problem. And someone said, "I'm going to call the solution the Moisés function," and that's all there is to it. Okay. Um, so, like I said, not practical for a calc class because you, if you get a problem of finding an inverse, I'm going to give you a problem that's doable. Uh, so I'm going to call it there. I'm going to, I mean, I have office hours at 1030. So I'll be back in two hours. And if, I mean, before that, I'm going to restart by good force. Um, next time this happens, I will have Zoom installed in the tablet and I'll share that screen. And life will be fine, I hope. All right. Uh, okay, is anyone there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me know if there's questions or see you in office hours. Are office hours the same Zoom link or is it a different yeah. Zoom link? It's the same link. Okay, awesome. Thank you. One, 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 All right, see you later. See you later, Aaron. I guess see you. I have a question about the written homework. Uh, yeah. I'm having a little trouble on the third question. It's where you have to find the inverse of uh, f of x and equals sine of x. I don't know uh, what to do with the domain. So one thing you could try is writing a table. Um, so. Do you know for some, va some values what you're supposed to get? Because if you don't know what to do with the domain, I assume your your answer is sort of hard time, something like that, right? Yeah, they say uh, the domain is uh, three radians over two uh, to five radians over two. Okay. And then it says to find uh, f of two radians and in, uh, inverse of zero. Right. So do you know what? 
that has to be? No. I'm kind of confused about all of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, I just installed Zoom, but now I can't see my clicking. I can't see the number. Uh, what's the new number? Just a second. I'm hoping I can share my screen so I can write something. Just stay in the meeting. I'll come back. All right. Just gonna 